Thank you, Your Honor. May it please the court. Um, as the state's aware, or the court's aware, the state of Ohio filed a sentencing memorandum with respect to this matter. And outlined in that memorandum, uh, the appropriate sentences would be here and the offenses that merge for the purposes of proceeding to sentencing. Um, and I think we've come, also come to an agreement with the defense that all of the offenses for which the defendant was found guilty in which Leslie DeJesus is the named victim would merge for the purposes of sentencing. And the state of Ohio would elect to proceed uh, for Leslie on count uh, three, murder B, which carries a sentence of 15 years to life in prison. The other offense for which the defendant was found guilty, which does not merge, would be the offense of aggravated robbery with the named victim being Jesus Cruz Maldonado. Your Honor. I'm sorry, Your Honor. Yes. Your Honor, the state of Ohio is requesting that this court impose consecutive sentences for those two offenses for which uh, it can sentence the defendant here today in court. It's the state's position that anything less would demean the seriousness of these offenses and would fail to adequately protect the public and punish this particular offender. The harm here was great, so great that not a single sentence is appropriate. The defendant killed Leslie in the course of fleeing from committing an aggravated robbery, and he inflicted harm on Mr. DeJesus uh, as well during the course of committing aggravated robbery against him. And ultimately, he destroyed an entire family. He committed uh, these offenses in front of the family's two young children and none of her family members, M Mr. Maldonado's, Leslie's, these children. They've been here throughout the course of this case. They were here throughout the course of the trial. Their lives are never gonna be the same. And you'll hear from uh, the family shortly. Your Honor, this defendant, left his calling card in this case. Now, I've read the pre-sentence investigation report. I've read the letter that the defendant has provided to the court. He has failed to accept any responsibility for his actions on November 15th of 2018, and he shows zero remorse. He continues to refute the fact uh, that it was him who stole that minivan and who was responsible. His criminal history dates back to 2010. And he has multiple um, <coughs> findings of delinquency as a juvenile for being caught in a stolen vehicle. On numerous occasions, there was an unidentified co-defendant, as there was in this case. And on many of those occasions, he was also found in possession of a screwdriver as well. He continued to uh, escalate his criminal behavior when he came into adulthood. In his first adult conviction, um, he fled from Strongsville police in a stolen vehicle, led them on a high-speed chase. He had a firearm on his, on his person when he was apprehended in that matter. And when he committed it, he was on probation uh, to the court for receiving stolen property of a motor vehicle. In this case, he left his calling card behind. In addition to the amount of DNA evidence, he left behind the tools he used to steal that vehicle. And as his own behavior demonstrates, Back in his conviction from four years ago, or five years ago now, he'll do anything it takes uh, to get away with the vehicles that uh, he attempts to steal. In that case, it was fleeing from the police. In this case, it was fleeing from that church parking lot at any means necessary. And in this matter, killing Leslie De Jesus uh, in the process. He committed this offense, Your Honor, these offenses against Leslie and uh, Jesus less than six months after being released uh, from the Ohio Department of Corrections. He was released in late April of 2018 and found himself um, back committing uh, his offense of choice and back to his life of crime uh, by mid-November. Um, the state of Ohio is asking that you do impose consecutive sentences here, um, 15 years to life for um, murder B and a sentence of 11 years to run consecutively to that for the aggravated robbery offense against Jesus. Now, I believe there's a number of family members here today, Your Honor, that would like to address the court. All right. <coughs> the court was extremely uh, instructive. Is there a question as to uh, the allied against the murder as stated by uh, <coughs> 
Yes, Your Honor. Um, that is an accurate rendition of what merges and doesn't merge. Uh, the um, four counts that uh, Mike was convicted of that pertain to Leslie DuHazes do merge, and the uh, final count of aggravated robbery where the victim is the husband it does not merge, and that's separate. We agree with that. All right, so um, Good morning, my name is Aresha De Jesus, and I'm reading this letter on behalf of Johnny De Jesus, Leslie De Jesus' father. I would like to, take, to thank you all for the opportunity to express my feelings. I am not the type of person who finds it easy to express himself through words written or otherwise. But in this case, it is necessary for a father to speak up. Any father would feel and do the same. It is my personal opinion that the convicted Michael Preston, with the evidence presented in this case and with his long history of crimes, is clearly a danger to society. <clears throat> Michael took away my daughter, Leslie, and in doing so, he not only destroyed my family, he ripped a large, irreplaceable piece of my heart out. He stole from her children, Leslie Cruz and Janelle Cruz, her baby chicks, as she lovingly called them the opportunity to enjoy and experience a full and happy life with their mother. At the same time, he robbed Leslie of the privilege of seeing Leslie and Janelle turn into the amazing adults they will become, and the possibility of seeing them grow into loving and caring parents in their own right. As a daughter, she was the best. As a mother, she was incomparable. As a person, there are not enough words to express her selflessness so much so that she gave her life protecting her family. This is why I call her my warrior. I ask that you put yourself in my shoes for a minute. I speak to you with my heart in my hands. Please help justice to be served. I ask that you impose a minimum sentence of at least 40 years without privileges so that he does not and cannot hurt any other person. To you, Michael Preston, all I have to say is that you have no idea the amount of damage you've caused my family and I. Your greatest punishment will be to live with the damage you have caused on your conscience. It will not let you live in peace. Again, all I ask is justice be served. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. This letter is from Ana Perez, that's Leslie de Jesus' aunt. Can you spell the name, please? A-N-A? A-N-A. And Perez, P-E-R-E-Z. I want to tell you that I believe in justice, but more so, I believe in divine justice. That no one saves the life of a human being and one can fall very low if he grew up in adverse and in a lacking environment, or by simply wanting easy things. I understand that someone as you has no values, self-respect, or respect for others, has many reasons to not value the lives of others and commit acts of brutality instead of being a good person. My niece, Leslie de Jesus, had a lot of abundance in everything. It's full of love, values, respect for others, she had many opportunities to take full advantage of her efforts. What were you thinking on November 15, 2018, when you left your house? Were you already planning what you were going to do, or did it suddenly occur to you? Because that day that you made the decision to commit that act, having the ability to stop, you continued without caring about the consequences. That day, you killed a family. You left some children without their mother, 
a husband without his wife, a mother without his daughter, sisters without a sister, and aunts and uncles without their nieces. Personally, when I received the call that my niece's life had been taken, I collapsed, fighting with God, filled me with hatred and helplessness because my, nie my niece did not deserve this. She did not deserve to have her life taken away the way it was. That at that moment, many things came to my mind. When she was little, of her battles, of her smile, and when she became the woman she was. She was very special. She was unique. She was the only one who scolded me to quit smoking. And I always told her not to worry, that I'm an old woman. I would eventually pass away anyway. She answered to me, do not say that. You're more than an aunt to me. If you were missing, nobody would fill the emptiness that you'd leave. If something happened to you, I wouldn't know how to live without you. That day, you took away from me so much that every day I look at my phone waiting for her call. That text message she sent me on November 15th at 11.45 in, in the morning, so happy because there were only two days left for her princess's sweet 15. She was fulfilling her girl's dream, but your acts turned it into a nightmare. You know that day my joy died. I am not the same as I was anymore. There isn't a day that I don't think about it and that my eyes are filled with a million tears. Outside laughing, but inside my soul is dead. Missing her laugh, her voice, and now I'm the one who says I don't know how to live without her because nobody can fill the emptiness. I don't feel sorry for you and I won't forgive you. It is up to God to forgive you and have mercy on you. Um, I'm reading uh, the letter of my mother. Y madre de Leslie de Jesús. The uh, mother of the um, of the victim. Escribo esta carta como madre a través de los ojos de Cristo, no para condenar, sino para buscar justicia. La vida del ser humano cae bajo si cadece expectativas de vida, de seguridad o de amor. Entiendo que tú con todas esas privaciones tendrás muchas razones para no valorar la vida y cometer actos de brutalidad con personas inocentes como en vida lo fue mi hija Leslie. Esa llamada dando esa terrible noticia inundó mi pecho de tanta angustia y dolor que pensé iba a morir. Fue tan grande la pena de mi alma que no habitará dolor dentro de mi cuerpo y comenzaré a drenar fe dentro de mí porque aquí dejó lo más valioso de su vida, sus hijos, los cuales no tendrán la presencia física de su madre y ella no podrá disfrutar sus diferentes etapas como alguna vez ella deseó. Orgullosa de decir que Leslie fue excelente hija, hermana, prima, sobrina, Excelente esposa y madre abnegada con sus retoños. La educación moral y espiritual que le brindé con todo mi ser la convirtió en una persona muy querida, apreciada por muchas personas donde quiera que ella hacía acto de presencia. Su presencia física no está más entre nosotros, pero sí sus recuerdos, su sonrisa. 
Me queda seguir luchando con profundo dolor en mi corazón. Solo me queda decirte que no tengo la capacidad ni la voluntad de perdonar a quien le quitó la vida a mi hija Leslie. Uh, I'm going to read the whole thing after I prepare the translation. All right. Your Honor, thank you. Ya que ese 15 de noviembre del 2018, mataste toda la familia. Como guerrera de Dios, te digo, no hay más condena que la justicia divina. Espero busques la fe y el perdón de Dios para que transformes tu corazón y tu vida y puedas alcanzar el perdón de Dios. Translation now, interpreter Robert Forstag. Um, I am writing this letter as a mother through the eyes of Jesus Christ, not to condemn, but to seek justice. A human's being life falls apart if there is no expectation of safety or of love. I understand that with all these deprivations, you have a lot of reasons not to value life and to commit brutal acts against innocent persons like my daughter Leslie. The call that I received, giving me the terrible news, that filled my heart with so much anguish and pain that I thought I would die. The pain of my soul was such that my body could not contain it, and I began to lose my faith. This is because I had lost the most valuable thing in life, my child. A child who will no longer have the presence of her mother and who will not be able to take pleasure in seeing her progress through the stages of life, as she had wished to do. I am proud to say that Leslie was an excellent daughter, sister, cousin, niece, and wife. She was a self-sacrificing wife to her children. The moral and spiritual upbringing that I provided to her with all of my heart made her a person who was very much loved and appreciated by people <coughs> everywhere she went. Her physical presence will no longer be among us, but the memories of her and of her smile will endure. And what is left for me is to continue to fight on, but with a heavy heart. The only thing that I have left to say is that I am both unable and unwilling to forgive the person who took the life of my daughter, Leslie. Because on November 15th, 2008, 2018, you killed my entire family. As a warrior of God, I can tell you that there is no worse punishment than divine justice. I hope that you seek faith and the forgiveness, forgiveness of God so that you transform your heart and your life and so that you can attain God's forgiveness. All right, thank you. Will she also be reading the Okay, she's, uh, I'm going to read, uh, she's going to read her own letter now that she prepared, and then she'll read it in Spanish, and then I will provide the English translation. Right, thank you. Leslie, era una mujer fuerte, luchadora, valiente y decidida, de carácter fuerte, la que un no no era motivo de rendimiento para ella darse por vencida. Mujer con un corazón enorme, ella llegó aquí con el sueño que todos conocemos, el quinceañero de su princesa. Además, proporcionarle una mejor vida a sus niños y estar cerca de nosotros su familia. Como toda una mujer luchadora y trabajadora, en muy pocos meses tenía trabajo, carro y apartamento, demostrando lo enseñado por nuestra madre, a ser mujeres de bien, fuertes, trabajadoras, con valores, siendo lo más importante en la vida de cualquier ser humano. Hoy no tenemos la mujer extraordinaria. Mi hermana Leslie, Culpa de personas como este individuo, que a pesar de sus errores y múltiples ocasiones en prisión, nunca se ha superado ni ha cambiado. Este individuo no podrá vivir junto a los ciudadanos que luchamos y trabajamos arduamente para obtener nuestras cosas con el sudor de nuestra frente. 
Dejarlo libre en poco tiempo será exponer las demás personas al peligro, ya que no tiene valores ni respeto ni amor propio a su persona. Será como dejarlo en libertad para que continúe cometiendo atrocidades. No puede tener oportunidad para esta persona que aún sabiendo lo que hizo, se escondió por dos semanas, se sentó en esta sala a negarlo todo y mirando con cinismo las fotos del cuerpo sin vida de mi hermana, escuchando la llamada del 911 de mi sobrina, como si fuera música para sus oídos, y no demostró arrepentimiento alguno. Testigos que fueron en defensa de su palabra, viendo las pruebas certeras de su culpabilidad, y aún sabiendo lo que enfrentara, enfrentara, enfrentará en prisión, no les importó, no se arrepiente y de quedar libre lo volverá a hacer. Él, no, él nos, arran, nos arrancó gran parte de nuestro corazón. Tanto así que mi madre, mis sobrinos, mi cuñado y yo continuando, continuamos recibiendo terapia para lidiar con todo esto. Esto que mi psicóloga llama trauma y yo llamo corazón en mil pedazos. Las sonrisas de mis sobrinos no son las mismas. No hay celebración para ellos. No existe acción de gracia. No existe para ninguno de nosotros. No existe Navidad. 15 de noviembre del 2018, fecha que destruiste mi familia, nuestro corazón. Le quitaste el privilegio a mis sobrinos de tener una madre, a mí una hermana y confidente. Pero a mi madre le dejaste un vacío enorme donde no hay un día sin llorar, no hay una noche de sueño tranquilo. 15 de noviembre del 2018, se detuvo la vida. Sabes, tú apenas comenzarás a vivir el calvario del encierro, la soledad, las limitaciones, el desespero, la angustia, del cual ni el delincuente más astuto puede escapar. En mi idioma, esto se llama justicia divina. Así que Dios tenga misericordia de ti. 15 de noviembre. Espero sea tu pesadilla de cada noche. Leslie was a strong woman. She was a brave and determined fighter with a strong character. She was a person who never accepted no as a reason to give in. She was a person with a very big heart. She came here with the dream that she had for her beloved children. She wanted to give her children a better life and to be closer to those of us in her family. Like any woman who is hardworking and a fighter, she got a job, a car, and an apartment within just a few short months of her arrival here. In this way, she showed that she learned the lessons our mother taught us, to be strong and hardworking women with values because values are the most important thing in a person's life. We no longer have with us the extraordinary woman who was my sister, Leslie. And this is the fault of persons who like this individual, who in spite of his past mistakes, and in spite of having been sent to prison on multiple occasions, has never been able to become a better person or change his ways. This is a person who cannot live with those of us who fight and work hard in order to earn what we have by the sweat of our brow. Allowing him to go free after a short sentence will mean exposing other persons to danger. Since this is a person who has no values, no respect for others, and no self-respect, releasing him would mean allowing him to commit further atrocities. A person like this should not be given such an opportunity. For this is a person who, knowing what he had done, hid from the authorities for two weeks. He sat in this courtroom and denied everything, looking cynically at the photographs of my dead sister, listening to the recording of my niece's 911 call as if it were music to his ears and showing no remorse whatsoever. The witnesses who testified in his defense saw the conclusive proof of his guilt and knew the kind of prison term that he was facing. But this did not matter to them. 
he himself showed no remorse, and if he is released, he would do the same thing again. <coughs> he wrenched from us a piece of all of our hearts. This is why all of us, my mother, her children, my brother-in-law, and me myself, are still receiving therapy in order to deal with all of this. My psychologist says that we are suffering from trauma. What I call it are shattered hearts. The smiles of her children are no longer the same. There is nothing for them to celebrate. There is no Thanksgiving and no Christmas for any of us. November 15th, 2018. This is the date that you destroyed my family, that you destroyed our hearts. <clears throat> you deprived her children of the chance to have a mother. You took the life of my only sister, my confidant, comp and you left a tremendous void in the life of my mother, who doesn't go a day without crying, and who hasn't enjoyed a single night of sound sleep since November 15, 2018, the day that her life changed forever. You know that you have only just begun to experience the ordeal of confinement, solitude, restrictions, despair, and anguish that even the most wily of criminals cannot possibly evade. In my language, this is called divine justice. And thus I pray that God have mercy on your soul. November 15, 2018 will be your own eternal nightmare. Cruz. Today, Monday, February 10, I stand here in front of you all speaking on behalf of my brother and I. On Thursday, November 15, exactly one year, two months, one week, and three days ago, this man took the life of the most important person in our life, our mother. Not only did he took her away from us, he also destroyed a whole family. Life has never been easy for us, but to wake up every morning hoping that all of this was just a nightmare is no way to look for a child. The simple thought that she won't be there for most, if not all important moments in our life is just heartbreaking, and to think that all of this could have been prevented if only he had gotten out of the car. But now it's too late, and what's done is done. What this man has done to this family, no one can fix. He ruined a 22-year-old relation, relationship and the life of two children. The day was the first, that day was the first time I had seen my father so heartbroken. In fact, in fact, before that day, I had only seen my father cry three times, and now I see him cry almost every day blaming himself. My brother, who was once a happy, loving boy who couldn't stand being inside the house for more than two hours, now locks himself in his room because he gets scared that what happened that day will happen again. I myself, that despite all I try to forget that day, I can't. I don't sleep anymore, and when I do, I normally cry myself to sleep. I don't feel safe going. I don't feel safe going outside, and the simple fact of crossing the street scares me. This is something no one should go through. Our family was not perfect. In fact, from far from it. But we all loved and supported each other through the hard times, and in moments like this, in this room right, he, right here, that is what matters the most. If it wasn't because of my family, I would not have been able to know what to do or how to act around this time, and thanks to them is why I am able to stand here and say these words. However, that doesn't stop me from thinking about how my life will change, how when I meet someone and ask about my mother, I have to tell them that she passed away or how in the future she won't be there to see me graduate, she won't be there to help me with my wedding, she won't be there when I become a mother, and how am I supposed to tell my children 
what happened when they asked their grandmother, what happened what, when they asked their grandmother why their grandmother isn't here. How am I supposed to live my life like nothing ever happened when everything I do or say reminds me she will not be there anymore? What am I going to do when the only person who truly knew me is gone? <coughs> what no one understands is that this man did not only take her, our mother, but he took a piece of our future. The only thing I ask is that during the, the, t the time he will be in jail, he regrets everything he did to our family and that he asks God for forgiveness because I will never give it to him. Thanks. <coughs> My name is Jeanette Pejot Ayala, and that is spelled J-E-A-N-E-T-T-E, J-E-A-N-E-T-T-E, Pejot, P-E-L-L-O-T, hyphen A-Y-A-L-A. I am the victim advocate for the prosecutor's office, and I am reading a letter um, of Jesus Omar Cruz Maldonado. I will be reading it in Spanish, and the interpreter will read it in English once I'm done. Con respeto a su, a su señoría, no sé si escribo bien, no hablo inglés y lo entiendo muy poco, pero sí sé lo que quiero y lo que le estoy pidiendo. Leslie era una buena hija, hermana, madre abnegada, excelente amiga, trabajadora, sincera. Le gustaba ayudar a los demás sin esperar nada a cambio y en fin era un gran ser humano. Para mí era mi alma gemela, el rayo del sol al despertar que me decía que había un nuevo amanecer. Su sonrisa pícara al verla en mis sueños me daba seguridad que todo iba a estar bien. Era mi compañera, mi amiga, mi confidente, quien me tenía la mano cuando me caía. Irradiaba confianza cuando tenía dudas, era quien me curaba las heridas, era quien me sacaba las lágrimas cuando lloraba, era mi soporte cuando tropezaba, era la promesa que hicimos en el altar de que sería mi pareja para toda la vida. Deseábamos envejecer juntos y, mirar, y mirábamos el futuro con alegría, pensando en algún día pudiéramos increír a nuestros nietos. Es así que hace un año y dos meses que miro al cielo buscando su rostro entre las nubes, en el día y en las noches pidiéndole a Dios poder soñar con ella. Ese día la tuve en par, la tuve y en par de minutos la perdí como el agua entre mis manos. Me la arrebataron sin darme la oportunidad de decirle lo mucho que la amo. No solo destruyó mi vida y la de mis hijos, destruyó la vida de toda una familia, ya que le quitó la vida a una mujer, compañera, esposa, hermana, tía y excelente madre. Le pido la condena más alta de los cargos que se le dieron al señor Preston, sin derecho a reducir la misma, ya que este ha probado que es un peligro para la sociedad. Por esa y muchas razones le pido que le dé la condena máxima, para que así un día yo pueda mirar a mis hijos a los ojos y poder, poder decirles que su madre no está presente con nosotros hoy, pero sí se le hizo justicia. De igual manera que creo en la justicia divina, creo, cre, quiero creer en la justicia del hombre. Honorable judge, I don't know if I write well. I don't speak English and I understand very little of the language. But I do know what I want and what I am asking of you. Leslie was a good daughter, sister, a self-sacrificing mother, an excellent friend. She was hardworking and honest. She liked helping other people while expecting nothing in return. She was, in short, a great human being. She was my soulmate, the son that heralded the dawn of a new day. Her mischievous smile, which I saw in my dreams, gave me the assurance that everything was going to be okay. She was my companion, my confidant, the person who lifted me up when I fell down. She exuded confidence when I was in doubt. She healed my wounds and wiped away my tears when I cried. She steadied me when I would stumble. She embodied the promise that she made to, she made to me on our wedding day, that she would be my wife forever. We wanted to grow old together, and we viewed the future with joy, looking forward to the day when we would be able to spoil our grandchildren. 
And that is why for the past 14 months, I have looked to the skies, looking for her face among the clouds of day and night, praying to God that I might dream of her. Yesterday, she was mine, but just like that, I lost her, like water spilling through my fingers. She was taken away from me without my having a chance to tell her how much I loved her. You not only destroyed my life, you destroyed the life of my entire family. Because you took the life of a woman, my wife, my companion, a sister, an aunt, and an excellent mother. For this and other reasons, I ask that you give Mr. Preston the maximum sentence. This way, I can one day look at my children in the eye and tell them that even though their mother is no longer with us, at least justice was served. Just as I believe in divine justice, I also want to believe in the justice of man. Thank you. Oh, okay, yeah, I, uh, I uh, completed treatment for an infection that uh, almost reached, uh, uh, reached my bones. La última pregunta es que uh, usted pidió resarcimiento por el, la, la furgoneta o el van, ¿no es cierto? Restitución. Restitución. No, no. All right, thank you very much. Oh, <coughs> State of Ohio would ask that you take into consideration the statements made here in court today by the victim, the victim's family, uh, that you uh, take into account the uh, principles and purposes of felony sentencing, uh, that you consider the defendant's criminal history, the harm caused, both the physical and psychological harm caused to the victim and their family here, and that you make the findings necessary uh, to impose consecutive sentences and sentence the defendant to a sentence of 26 years to life in prison. Thank you. First and foremost, my heart goes out to my friends. It really does. 
possible. To Leslie, who needs to watch her mother and can't, is not afforded the simple things like asking, how do I look in this dress today? Or to John Yell, who might wake up and be scared and need his mother to hold him. They have lost the love of them. But we're losing the love of them today as well. A very important part of our family. A very loving and compassionate man who has made many mistakes in his past, but has risen above those things. I pray for healing for both families. And I will continue to do so, despite how the family may feel about me. I spoke the truth when I spoke on the witness stand and so did my mother. I do believe that God sits high and he looks low, so he knows what's happening. And in light of all of that, I just want to ask for leniency for my mother. Because I know that when I spoke, I told the truth, and I know he's indeed innocent. And that's what I have to say. Thank you, Judge. <laughs> Judge, um, those are uh, the only witnesses that we have uh, that want to say anything on behalf of Mike. Um, I just want to add that, um, first off, uh, Mike wanted us to maintain his innocence, which we have done, and uh, he still does that to this day. Um, we do want to say, though, that obviously our hearts go out to the uh, Jesus uh, Cruz Maldonado family. Um, we feel terrible for what occurred. Um, there really is no way uh, to uh, lessen their grief. It's a horrible thing they've gone through, and we all acknowledge that. Mike's only position was that he was not the person responsible for that. Uh, I do want to say to the court this. Um, the count that he was convicted of on murder is uh, the language is that the death was caused as a proximate result of committing another felony. And I think that's important to remember when sentencing for this reason. The bottom line is that I don't believe whoever did this that there was any t intention to kill anybody uh, or actually even harm anybody to be honest with you. Um, there was an attempt to, to steal a van. It was a car theft and as in the process of this happening someone was killed. Uh, I think it was an accident that um, um, uh, Leslie was run over. Uh, I think that whoever was driving the van was just trying to drive away, was trying to get away. And um, they happened in the process of that to um, drive over her and kill her. The jury was given the option of finding uh, Mike guilty of purposely causing the death <coughs> of Leslie, which would have been aggravated murder, as well as uh, uh, attempting to purposely cause the death of Jesus, which was the count of attempted aggravated murder. They decided uh, to return a verdict of not guilty on that count. I believe the reason they did that is because the evidence showed that there was no purpose to cause the death of another person uh, doing this. Uh, murder B is a statute that was uh, passed by the Ohio legislature years ago uh, to cover situations like this where there is no purpose to kill somebody but in the course of committing a serious felony uh, you end up causing, approximately causing the death of someone else. So that's another way of saying that it was an accident uh, in, in the process of committing an aggravated robbery you uh, accidentally kill this person. That's what you have here. So based on that, Your Honor, we ask that you consider uh, sentencing Mike to concurrent time on both of these counts. Now, 15 to life is a sentence that you have to impose for murder. The life sentence is obviously very long. There's a life tail there. Theoretically, Mike could be sentenced to 15 to life and he could spend the rest of his life in prison. Um, that's obviously highly substantial and uh, it's, it's a serious sentence and it's uh, something that I think would cover uh, what he's been convicted of here. 
the, uh, we're not trying to lessen what happened to Mr. Maldonado. Obviously, he was also victimized here. And basically, you can't change what happened here. But, uh, and, and we're not trying to say that he has been victimized or agreed. But all we're saying is that a sentence where you make uh, the uh, robbery count can, uh, concurrent to the murder count uh, is not less than the seriousness of what happened. It's a substantial sentence and 15 to life we think would be appropriate uh, and enough for what happened here. All right, Judge, so um, once again, uh, our, our, we do uh, say that we recognize the grief that the uh, Maldonado Cruz family is suffering. Uh, Mike has a constitutional right to remain silent. We're gonna exercise that. That does not mean that he is, he is in any way uh, uh, not respecting this court or what happened to the family. <coughs> he has a constitutional right to uh, maintain his innocence, which is what we are doing. And um, that's all we have at this point, Your Honor. All right. Thank you. Uh, Mr. The court must and uh, has, uh, well, and before we proceed, I did consider for the record, the entire record, I considered the oral statements made here today. I did consider the pre-sentence investigation report, uh, which did include a, an institutional summary uh, from um, Mr. Preston's time uh, of incarceration. I also considered um, the victim impact statements and any other information in the file, um, which includes a letter received this morning uh, from Mr. Preston uh, and victim impact uh, letter, which was read here today and dated January 30th, 2020 uh, by Johnny DeJesus. Were there any corrections that needed to be made uh, to the pre-sentence investigation report? Uh, none on the part of the defense, Your Honor. Very So I will incorporate the pre-sentence investigation report as well as a <coughs> sentencing memorandum uh, that I did receive from uh, the state. Um, did you, did the defense have an opportunity to review the sentencing memorandum? We did, Judge. And were, was there anything in that sentencing memorandum that you wanted to address? No, Your Honor, I think we've addressed everything today. All right. The court must and has formulated its decision based upon the overriding principles and purposes of felony sentencing. And that's namely to protect the public from future crime by the defendant or others and to punish the offender using the minimum sanctions that the court determines accomplish those purposes. And that's without imposing an unnecessary burden on state or local government resources. To achieve these purposes, the court considered the need for incapacitation, deterrence, rehabilitation, and providing for restitution. I've also ensured that the sentence uh, being imposed um, has taken consideration of the seriousness and recidivism factors relevant to the offense and the offender, and that's pursuant to revised code section 2929.12. The court um, also has ensured that the sentence being imposed does not demean the seriousness of the crime or the impact that it has uh, had on victims and that it is consistent with other similar offenses committed by like offenders. Finally, the sentence is not based upon any impermissible purposes and that's namely Mr. Preston's race, ethnic background, gender, or religion. Do you understand all of that, Mr. Preston? Yes, so as uh, the parties have stipulated, the court will sentence as to count three, uh, murder in violation of revised code section 2903.02b, uh, an unspecified felony, and also count six um, as to Jesus uh, Cruz Maldonado in violation of uh, revised code section 2911.01A3. That's a felony of the first degree. Um, the court did consider uh, in terms of uh, the seriousness of the, the crime here that um, this is uh, one of the most serious uh, forms of the offense in that the victim of the offense both victims of the offense have suffered 
uh, serious physical, psychological, um, or economic harm as a result of the offense. Um, the harm uh, of the children witnessing their mother uh, being run over, I don't know that they will ever get over that. Uh, the court has also considered um, <coughs> whether um, there was, whether any factors um, indicate that the crime was less serious than conduct normally constituting offense, and the court has found no grounds to make that finding. In terms of uh, your likelihood to commit future crimes, Mr. Preston, the court um, did and will note for the record that um, you previously were adjudicated a delinquent child uh, on numerous occasions. Almost all of those were related to car theft. And the court does note that as you got older, those offenses did become more serious and that you carried, uh, by the end, uh, at, at least one of those occasions had a knife on your person and um, that you did flee from the police during um, one of those crimes. And now here we sit with someone um, who lost their life because of it. Uh, I've also considered uh, that you had just gotten out of prison uh, after four years. Uh, you had only been out for six months, which indicates that you had not been rehabilitated to a satisfactory degree uh, after uh, previously um, being sanctioned for similar conduct. Uh, the court does not believe that you intended to uh, run over uh, Ms. Jesus. However, you had ample opportunity to abandon the theft of the vehicle and didn't, ta didn't take that option as your co-defendant did. Had you not expressed a sense of entitlement over the, the vehicle, um, Ms. DeJesus would still be here today. The court cannot consider uh, any uh, genuine remorse uh, in this matter um, as there hasn't been any expressed. I will find that after considering all the factors uh, set forth in revised code section 2929.12 that a prison term is consistent with the purposes and principles of sentencing and that um, you're not amenable to any available community control <coughs> sanctions, that um, anything other than a prison sentence would uh, demean the seriousness of your conduct, its impact on the victim, and that um, a sentence of imprisonment is commensurate with the seriousness of your conduct uh, in this matter and that it does not place an unnecessary burden on state or local government resources. As to um, count three, uh, the court hereby orders, uh, Mr. Preston, that you serve a prison term of 15 years to life in prison. This is on count three. And as to count six, the court finds or imposes a prison sentence of eight years, and that's on count six. I am ordering that the sentences be served consecutively, and that is pursuant to revised code section 2929.14C4 because I find that the consecutive service of the sentence is necessary to protect the public from future crime uh, and to punish the offender, and that consecutive sentences are not disproportionate to the seriousness of your conduct um, and to the danger that you possess to the public. I also find that at least two of the offenses were committed as part of one or more courses of conduct and that the harm caused by two or more of the multiple offenses was so great or unusual that no single prison term for any of the offenses committed 
as part of any of the courses of conduct adequately reflects the seriousness of your conduct. I also find that your history of criminal conduct uh, demonstrates that consecutive sentences are necessary to protect the public from future crime uh, by you. As part of the sentence, um, I'm advising you that um, you are subject upon release to a period of post-release control of five years, and this is mandatory. It will be uh, administered by the Adult Parole Authority, um, and that is pursuant to uh, the uh, post-release control uh, statute. If and when post-release control is imposed following your release from prison, Mr. Preston, if you violate conditions of that supervision, the parole board may impose a prison term as part of your sentence of up to half of your stated prison term. You also may be charged with a new offense called escape if you fail to report to your parole officer. Do you understand that, Mr. Preston? Yes, sir. If while on post-release control, uh, you're convicted of a new felony offense, in addition to being punished for the <coughs> underlying conduct, an additional prison term of one year or whatever time remains on your post-release control term may be added as an additional consecutive penalty. While on post-release control, you may not ingest or be injected with a drug of abuse, and you must submit to random drug testing. You may be eligible for earned days of credit under circumstances specified in revised code section 2967.193. The credit is not automatic. You may only do so by productive participation in educational, vocational, and or substance abuse treatment programs and or prison industrial employment of up to 8% of your stated prison term. As you have been determined uh, to be indigent, this court will waive court costs in this matter. I understand that the uh, victim is not requesting restitution, so uh, there will be no restitution order. You will receive credit for days served. Court has that calculation at 440 days of jail time credit. Is that correct? Um, we haven't added it up, but that sounds correct. All right, so you'll receive credit for 440 days of jail time credit. Mr. Preston, you, you are entitled, uh, as the court did sentence you consecutively, uh, you are entitled to uh, appellate counsel. Would you like the court to appoint appellate counsel for you? We would, Judge. You must file your notice of appeal within 30 days of the date of this entry. Um, Mr. Preston, the court will note for the record that um, your, your career of car theft um, started when you were very young, uh, and uh, the court is sad to see that there were, there were not any sufficient interventions put in place uh, to help you when you were a child. But once you became an adult and you had spent a few short years in prison, you did have an opportunity to change the course of your um, life, and I, I hope that you will take advantage of that this time. Um, Judge, can I add one thing? Yes. Um, would you uh, 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 order a transcript of state expense for purposes of appeal because uh, wife is indigent? I will. Was there anything else that I needed to address? No, Your Honor. Uh, as to um, Notice of duties to enroll as violent offender. Um, could I see counsel?
right, we are going to take a short recess uh, so that your attorney, can, your attorneys can explain to you, Mr. Preston, your notice of duties to enroll as a violent offender pursuant to revised code section 2903.41. However, I will explain that you have been convicted of or pled guilty to a qualifying violent offense, uh, offender offense as defined in revised code section 2903.41, specifically uh, murder. Uh, you uh, are required to enroll in person with the sheriff of the county in which you establish residency within 10 days of coming into that county or of occupying a dwelling for more than three days in that county. You are required to provide the sheriff certain information, including your social security number, full name, and any aliases you use. You are required to provide your residence address. You are required to provide information regarding the offense of which you were convicted or pled guilty. You are required to provide a description of any scars, tattoos, or other distinguishing marks on your person. You are required to provide the name and address of any place where you are employed or attend school, any driver's license number or commercial driver's license number, or state identification card issued to you. You are also required to provide the license plate number of each vehicle owned or operated by you or registered in your name. The vehicle identification number and description of the vehicle must also be provided to the sheriff. You are required to provide the sheriff fingerprints and palm prints, and the sheriff will also obtain a photograph of you at the time of enrollment. After the date of initial enrollment, you're required to re-enroll annually you must update and or amend any of the information that I've just explained to you um, above that has changed and provide any additional information requested at the county sheriff's office. You must do this within 10 days of the anniversary of the calendar date on which you initially enroll. If you change your residence address, you shall provide written notice of that change to the sheriff with whom you most recently enrolled and to the sheriff in the county in which you intend to reside. You are required to comply with all of these requirements that I've just outlined to you for a period of 10 years, unless this court makes another determination. Since your expected residence address is located in Cuyahoga County, you shall enroll in person uh, no later than 10 days after a release uh, or sentencing, which in your case, uh, it would be after your release from prison with the Cuyahoga County Sheriff's Office. A failure to enroll or failure to verify your residence at the specified times will result in criminal prosecution. I'm going to give you a, an opportunity to discuss this uh, with your counsel if you have any questions about what I've explained to you. Um, and we will go back on the record in about two minutes. Thank you, Judge.
We're back on the record. All right, Mr. Preston, you've had an opportunity to review uh, your notice of duty to enroll as a violent offender. This is pursuant to Sierra's law. Uh, you have uh, signed this notice. Is this your signature on the bottom? Yes. All right. And do you have questions at all about the requirements that I've outlined for you? All right, thank you. And as I stated before, you do have a right to appeal your conviction, your uh, sentence and conviction in this matter. Um, you must do that by filing a notice of 